Hey everyone, it's Jeff Salzenstein here and I'm really excited to do this video for you today because we are going to talk about how you can deal better with those dreaded wide balls. Now a lot of traditional coaches are going to tell you to get really low all of the time moving across the court, staying low, being low. And they're partially correct. The real key is to be low and wide at the end of the shot. And that's something that I focus on in my teaching. So first I'm going to show you the problem. Then I'm going to get into the solution and I'm actually going to give you a tangible physical exercise that you can do at your home, that you can do on the court, that will make a tremendous difference. And the cool thing is that you're probably not going to see this exercise anywhere else. Unless of course you study martial arts or Tai Chi and I don't know a lot of tennis players that are doing that. I actually had to leave tennis to be able to bring this exercise to you and uh, we're going to get to that in a couple of minutes. So there are a number of examples of doing the wrong thing when you're dealing with wide balls on the forehand. And a lot of things that I, a lot of problems that I see is people that have too narrow of a base when they finish. I also see situations where someone is moving too low to the ball in the beginning so it actually slows them down. You can't really stride out to the wide ball. I also see people sticking their butt out too much. They get in that athletic position and they're sticking out and they actually get on their toes and they're falling forward. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it correctly now, how you can change this and how this is going to completely change your tennis and then I'm also going to show you that physical training exercise that you can do on the court or at home. If you do this exercise every day you're going to notice huge gains in your tennis especially in dealing with those wide balls. So the solution to dealing with those wide balls, and I happen to demonstrate the forehand, but you can do it on an open stance backhand as well. The solution is to get in a wide base at the end of the shot and to feel very grounded and solid through your feet. You'll also notice that I was doing, I was making a movement called tucking the tail. And that's basically where you push your tail forward at the end of the shot like this instead of sticking your butt out. As soon as you push your tail forward, that changes your balance point and it gives you better balance at the end of the shot. Federer, Djokovic, Nadal, all these guys do this. Now I don't think they were sitting around practicing Tai Chi growing up, but I'm sure somebody taught them the importance of great posture and balance. And that's the one thing that you can do to change your forehand and your backhand on those wide balls and it's going to really help your tennis. Now next, I'm going to show you horse stance. That's the exercise where when you get in that wide base, you're going to do horse stance, which I basically stole from Tai Chi. I, I worked with some great Tai Chi instructors, really had a strong martial arts background, actually had to leave the sport of tennis and go out of traditional thinking to learn this exercise and to practice it and develop incredible leg strength. So let's get to horse stance right now. All right, everybody, this is the moment you've been waiting for, horse stance right here. And basically I'm holding an imaginary ball and I'm very upright with my upper body. You can see that my base is wide. My knees are pushed out a little bit. They're not collapsing in. I'm tucking the tail and we're going to give you a side view here in a second. But basically you're going to focus on staying in this position as long as you can. Now the cool thing is that I can actually do this with a racket as well. All right now the cool thing is I can swing and be in horse stance again holding the racket working on my finish. Doesn't matter if I finish low, doesn't matter if I finish high. I'm going to work on that horse stance feeling real solid with my base. And the other cool thing is I can do it on the backhand side as well. So if you practice holding this position with a wide base, you're going to notice incredible gains in your leg strength. Now you want to do something like this. Start with 15 seconds if you can handle it. Then go to 30, a minute. Some of those Tai Chi masters that are hanging out in the woods in the mountains somewhere, they can go 15, 20, 25 minutes at a time. Now I'm not asking you to do that, but certainly if you practice this exercise on the court or if you practice it at home, you're going to notice huge improvements in your leg strength, even in your concentration skills because you have to stand in that position for a length of time and it's going to really help you on those wide balls.